You mentioned sort of after World War II, we had more market participants in the stock market, for example, yeah. where prior to that, there wasn't much participation. And in fact, if you go back to pre-depression and, and through yep. the Spanish flu in the roaring 20s, market participation was even lower than that. And the, the stock market was basically run, run like a casino, right? It was, it was yeah. really just pure speculation and, and pure gambling. And I kind of feel like... Joseph with- Kennedy was one of the guys that, uh, you know, put the wolf in charge of the uh, hen house yep. thing with the SEC, right? Yeah. And, and so you sort of think about what we've gone through there and that... that um, evolution of of markets and and secondary markets and capital markets so pre-depression then you've got post-world war ii where you've got far more market participation yep like i'm just wondering these um these nfts the digital currencies a whole bunch of other assets that appear to be speculative now like i'm genuinely curious whether those assets and those asset classes start to become far more mainstream listen they could robert and it's possible, right? Um, again, it's how much you have in your portfolio that does that. And again, like you should always have a certain amount of your portfolio that's in speculative assets mm-hmm. that, you know, that's the high kicking stuff. Um, is that something you're going to risk your whole capital on? I don't think that's prudent. Um, again, uh, you can be entrepreneurial in maybe your business where you have more control, but sure. on your investments, I think it's about preserving capital. Um, and getting a return. Um, sometimes you want to have aggressive returns. Sometimes you don't want to have aggressive returns. So you've got to be careful what you what you want to do. You can definitely take a lot more risk. It's just sometimes uh, you can take a lot more risk without getting a return, and that's where you really don't want to be involved. 